Drones are one of the main weapon systems in EVE Online, but unlike other weapon systems, you don't have to fit them to a high slot on your ship. In fact, technically you don't fit drones to a ship at all so much as put them in a special drone bay for launching into space later. This means that your high slots are free to use various different weapon systems or even utilities like Nosferatu's or neutralizers, giving drone ships a lot more versatility than some of the other vessels out there. They do require a more significant skill point investment and are slightly more complex to use, but you will find that those skills and that knowledge benefits you across ships on all four of the main empires. By the end of this video you should have a firm understanding on how drones operate and how to best use them. Drones are one of those things I strongly recommend that all pilots have a basic understanding of. Ahoy there folks, I'm Captain Benzie and welcome back to another lesson for the Cat Skull Academy. In this video I'm going to teach you the basics of drone operation. We're going to have a look at the skills that you should be training if you want to get the most out of your drones. We'll look at how to identify which ships can use drones in general and which ones are drone specialists in specific if this is a weapon type you want to use as your primary weapon type. We're then going to undock a Tristan and showcase how to use your drones in space. Everything from launching, recalling, issuing commands, and assigning groups to them to help with their survivability and manipulation in space. We'll even briefly cover how to recover your drones if you accidentally abandon them by warping off. Don't worry, it happens to all of us. By the end of this video you should be comfortable enough using the Tristan fit that I showcase in this video to go out into combat scenarios and start making really good ISK. After this video I recommend you go and look at my 50 million ISK per hour Tristan. It is the 17.4 million ISK Tristan that I'm going to be showcasing in this video, running Abyssal Dead Spaces and making upwards of 50 million ISK per hour in return. That's the power of drone ships. Anyway, without further ado then, let's jump right in. First of all then, let's have a look at the drone skills. So if we open up the skill catalog, then come along to the left hand side here to the drone skills, you'll see this rather beefy looking menu here. There's a lot of different skills to cover here, so we are only going to cover the basics and in a fairly swift way. First of all, the most important skill to ever look at is the drones skill. This is skill at remote controlling drones, can operate one drone per skill level. You will need at least the first level of this skill in order to use drones at all, and if you want to use the maximum of five drones, you will need all five levels trained. It's important to consider which ship you're going to be using. If the ship you're using can only launch two drones, then initially you're only going to need to have the drone skill trained up to level two, but it is worth checking the requirements on the drone skill because it does hook into others and certain skills do have requirements based on others. Beyond this we then have things like light drone operation, medium drone operation and right over here heavy drone operation. Light drones are the kind of drones that are usually launched from frigates, destroyers and some cruisers. Although medium drones can be launched from some specialist cruisers and battle cruisers, then you have the heavy drones which are usually launched from battleships. Again, there are some battleships that can't really use heavy drones, and ultimately most drones can be used by most ships if that makes sense. If you have, for example, the Galente Dominix, which is a drone battleship, there is nothing to stop you launching heavy, medium, or light drones depending on what you want to use in the given situation. Beyond this, training these skills allows you to start specialising into some of the other types of drones. For example, we have Amar drones, Kaldari drones, Galente drones, and Minmatar drones. These all do different types of damage. There are drones from each of the empires at different sizes. So there is a Minmatar light drone, a Minmatar medium drone, and a Minmatar heavy drone. All of those specialise in doing explosive damage, whereas the Amar drones specialise in electromagnetic damage, the Kaldari drones specialise in kinetic damage, and the Galente drones specialise in thermal damage. This allows you to use certain drones into a situation in order to exploit your enemy's weaknesses. It's worth briefly mentioning as well, there are things like mining drones and salvage drones as well. We're not going to be covering those too heavily in this video because those are more specialised towards certain ships which I will cover elsewhere on this channel. 
Now beyond this, there are then generic drone skills, things like drone avionics. This increases the control range of your drones by 5,000 meters per skill level. Essentially, drones can operate in a certain control range around your ship, and by training the drone avionics skill, you increase that range so that your drones can attack targets that are further away. We then have drone durability. This does exactly what it says on the tin. It increases the drone's shield, armor, and hull hit points per skill level trained. Essentially, if you want your drones to be more survivable so they don't just die in one shot when the enemies decide to shoot at them, this skill is for you. Drone interfacing. This increases your drone damage for each level that you have skilled. It does also affect the mining drones, but again, that's a separate topic for a separate video. If you want your drones to be doing more damage, then drone interfacing is absolutely the skill you need to be looking at here. Drone navigation is a bit of a complex one. It looks simple on the surface level, but it has a lot going on with it. It's a 5% increase to drone maximum velocity per level, basically how fast your drones actually fly around in space. Now, it's all very well and good having drones that do massive amounts of damage, but if they can't hit their target for whatever reason, then that damage is ultimately worthless. And one of the main reasons that a drone may not be able to hit a target is if that target is moving faster than the drone can keep up. This is why sometimes a battleship will swap down to medium or even light drones in order to be able to use those drones higher velocity to actually hit the target. Again, you might be able to use heavy drones which have massive amounts of damage, but if they can't keep up with the target in order to hit it, then the light drones are going to be better. Finally here we have drone sharpshooting. This and increases the optimal range of the drones that you're using. Again, this is all about application. It means that your drones can shoot at a target from further away, which allows them to actually apply that damage to the targets that you're shooting at. If you're finding that your drones aren't hitting their targets or aren't keeping up with them, then drone navigation and drone sharpshooting are probably the ones you want to look into. It is worth noting that drone avionics does increase up to advanced level as well. Once it's at advanced level, the bonus is smaller and requires a lot more skill points, but it is a way to maximize your drone's damage output if that's something you want to look into. Finally, let's talk about these skills down here. These are very specialized drone skills. We have things like the mutated drone specialization. This will allow you to use very special drones that are very rare to use and something we're not gonna cover in this video. But again, that's a topic we'll cover in future, so do stay subscribed to the channel if you wanna keep up with that kind of information. Repair drone operation allows you to use logistics drones to repair other ships. Again, very specialized in operation. We're not gonna talk about it in this video. Salvage drones are like salvages but attached to drones. You can use these to basically salvage ships whilst your ship is doing other things. And there's a specialization for those as well. And then sentry drones are very special sniper drones. These don't fly around and chase after their targets. You drop them into space like little sentry guns and they will turn and fire at their targets, but they themselves will not move. These are primarily used on battleships. Again, we will not be talking about those in this video. The skills to look at first of all then are definitely the drone skills so that you can start using these at all. Then you start to look into the generic drone skills and then you may want to look into the specialized drone skills. Light drone operation is important. You're going to want to get that at least to level three because then you can start training to medium drone operation if you want to use those. And once medium drone operation is at three, you can then start training heavy drone operation. So if you want to be a dedicated drone pilot using heavy drones on big ships, you are still going to need to train light and medium drone operation at least to level three. That said, because you are going to be wanting to do something while you're training, I do recommend training these anyway. If you ultimately want to fly a Dominix, for example, the Galente drone battleship, chances are you're going to want to fly something like a Tristan or an Algos on the way up, so you're gonna need the light drone operation skills to get the most out of those. Then, once you hit things like cruisers and battle cruisers, you can start training medium drone operation in order to pilot things like the Vexa series of cruisers or the Myrmidon in battle cruisers. Then finally, once you start hitting the battleship skills and you're training into those, then you can start training the heavy drone operation skill to make the best out of that. So consider that, first of all, you're gonna want drones, the sub skills, and light drone operation, then move into medium, then into heavy drone operation later on. 
the specialised Amar, Kaldari, Galente and Minmatar drone skills are going to depend on which drones you want to actually be using. So if you want to be using primarily Minmatar drones, then skilling into those is going to help. I ultimately do think you should be training these up fairly equal to each other because then you can train, uh, change your drones on the fly based on the mission that you are going out to in order to maximise your damage output. But again, that's getting into slightly more advanced information. Next we need to learn how to identify when a ship can use drones and when it is a specialist drone ship. Now in order to do this you can go into the ship's info page, you can do this in a multitude of ways, I'm doing it here via the ship tree. So I'm going to go in on the Tristan here, click show info and then we change to the attributes tab. Now underneath the attributes tab in structure we should see two stats here called drone capacity and drone bandwidth. We'll talk about these more in a moment. But if you have drone capacity and drone bandwidth, that means that this ship can use drones. We can compare this to something like, say, the Catalyst here. If I go to show info on the Catalyst, under attributes, under structure, there is no drone capacity and no drone bandwidth, which means the Catalyst cannot use drones. So what do those stats actually mean? Well, let's open the Tristan back up to give an explanation. Drone capacity is the maximum volume that can be carried in the drone bay. So in this case, 40 cubic meters worth of drones can be put into the drone bay. Again, we'll talk about sizes more in just a moment. We then have drone bandwidth, which is the limitation of the number and size of drones that can be controlled simultaneously. Basically, how many drones can be controlled in space. In the case of the Tristan here, this is 25 megabits per second. Now it's worth just pausing for a moment and talking about the three main sizes of drones. You have light drones, medium drones, and heavy drones, as we've already seen. Light drones take up 5 cubic meters of drone capacity and have a 5 megabit per second drone bandwidth requirement. Medium drones have a 10 cubic meter capacity requirement, they take up 10 cubic meters of drone base space, and they have a bandwidth requirement of 10 megabits per second. Heavy drones break the rule here a little bit. It's 25 cubic meters of capacity and 25 megabits per second of drone bandwidth. Now what we, mean, what we see here with the Tristan then, is that this theoretically can fit a single large drone in its drone bay, and it can control one large drone, because it's got the required 25 megabits per second. Now we know that the Tristan is a frigate, and so it's more likely that we're going to want to use a larger wave of smaller drones. In fact, you will get better damage results out of doing this. Now if we know that a light drone has a capacity, has a cargo size of 5 cubic meters and requires 5 megabits per second of drone bandwidth, what we can infer from this stat here is that the Tristan can carry 8 light drones in its drone bay because 5 times 8 is 40 cubic meters or 40 cubic meters divided by the 5 meters cubed of cargo space is 8, right? And the drone bandwidth, because light drones require 5 megabits per second of bandwidth, we can take that bandwidth of 25 megabits per second, divide it by the 5 megabits per second required for each of the light drones, and see that this can fly 5. So whilst it can carry 8, it can only actually launch and control 5 at any one time. This essentially means that you can have a few spares in your cargo hold with the Tristan, or you could even just, you know, have a couple of different options in there, like maybe you've got acolytes and hobgoblins, so that you can swap between damage types as required. To give another example of this, let's just jump into the Guristus Pirates ship tree and have a look at the Worm, another very popular drone frigate. Here we can see that this has a drone capacity of only 25 cubic meters, but a drone bandwidth of 10 megabits per second. This means we can carry a whopping total of 5 drones in that drone bay, and we can only launch 2 of them at a time. Now, admittedly, if we go to the traits of the, uh, of the worm, we can see that it gets rather large bonuses here to light combat drone damage and hit points, 300% in fact. So it does absolutely multiply those out, so each drone gets a 300% bonus, thus is the equivalent of four drones, meaning even though it's only launching two, it's theoretically launching eight. It's only two drones, but they're going to be doing the damage of eight, and they will have the combined total hit points of eight drones, if that kind of makes sense. That's how you can tell this. 
If we go up to something like the Healer and have a look at its attributes, again under structure, drone capacity 100 cubic meters and 20 megabits per second of drone bandwidth. Now if we assume that the Healer is of course a cruiser sized vessel and therefore we can assume it would like to use medium drones, medium drones take up 10 cubic meters of cargo and they take up 10 megabits per second of bandwidth. Therefore we can have up to 10 of these in the drone bay and we can launch two of them at once. As a final example of this, let's go back to the Galente Federation ship tree and look at another popular drone vessel, the Vexa. Here we can see drone capacity 125 cubic meters and 75 megabits per second of drone bandwidth. Now that's 75 megabits per second means you can put, launch out five medium drones quite comfortably. That'll take up 50 megabits per second. You can also easily fit 50 drones, uh, sorry, 10, five drones into the drone bay there. I will get my math right here. 125 cubic meters, five medium drones will take up 50 cubic meters, would have 75 spare, which gives us a lot of versatility utility for optionals. It does mean we can actually mix things around a little bit as well. If we wanted to, we could actually launch three heavy drones out of this, each with a 25 megabit per second requirement, and therefore 75 megabits per second bandwidth. We can then have those three comfortably fit in the drone bay. Again, they would take up 75 cubic meters. That 50 cubic meters left makes sense to fill that with a load of medium drones, right? Five medium drones, which this can then launch. Now you might be saying, hang on a second, Benzie, you said that the, the five medium drones would only use up 50 megabits per second of drone bandwidth. This can control 75. Why can't it launch more than five? Remember when we go back to the drones skill, you can launch one drone per level of the drones skill. That skill caps out at five. There is no way to launch more than five drones from one ship in one go. There's probably a lot of good reasons for this, like game balance or just making sure there aren't so many drones on the grid that, I mean, imagine you've got 100, uh, 75 megabits per second of drone bandwidth there. That could theoretically launch 15 light drones. A load of Vexes launching 15 light drones each is going to be a lot of stuff spamming up the overview. So it's kind of a balancing factor. But essentially, those are the stats you're looking for. Now, I've kind of already touched upon it, but we wanted to also discuss how to tell if a ship is a dedicated drone ship if you're using these as your primary weapon type. If we go back to the Tristan, we can actually just mouse over it at this point because we're going to be looking at the standard skill bonuses. Here on the Tristan, you can see Galente frigate bonuses per skill level, 10% bonus to drone hit points and tracking speed. It doesn't increase the drone damage in any way, so you have five drones out, but those five drones at Galente Frigate 5 have an additional 50% hit points and 50% tracking speed so they can apply their damage better. If we look across at the Algos, again you can see here, 10% bonus to drone hit points and damage this time. So again, we launch a load of drones out of the Algos, and if this is full Galente Destroyer 5, you're getting a 50% bonus to their hit points and to their damage, which means they can do a lot more damage. You're, essentially 5 drones are doing the damage of 7.5 drones at that point. That's pretty powerful. And finally, looking at the Vexa, again, you can see 10% bonus to drone hit points, damage, and mining yield. Now, the mining yield, again, we're not worried about for this video, but it does mean if you were using mining drones on a Vexa, they are better than they would be otherwise, right? But, again, 50% hit points, 50% damage available on the Vexa there. And it's worth noting that it is just drone hit points. It does not specify light, medium, or heavy drones. You can see that medium hybrid turret is specified, so small hybrid turrets wouldn't get a bonus on the Vexa, but the Vexa can use small, medium, or heavy drones, light, medium, or heavy drones, and will get bonuses to all of them. That's really quite powerful. It is worth noting that the Gurstus Pirates ships do have this specification. You can see on the Worm, 300% bonus to light combat drone damage and uh, hit points. It wouldn't work on heavy drones or medium drones. If we look at the healer, again, it's medium combat drone damage, so even if you launched heavy or light drones, they wouldn't get that bonus. And the same does actually apply for the rattlesnake here. Sentry drone and heavy drone are specified. So even though the rattlesnake can launch a load of light or medium drones, they don't get that bonus to uh, damage and hit points that is part of the ship.
There is one final statistic we need to talk about in regards to drone ships, and this is found on the fitting page. If you open up the fitting screen and look at the bottom right, there is a drone section. A lot of this should look fairly familiar by this point in time. You have a DPS readout here based on the drones that you have in your cargo bay currently, sorry, in your drone bay currently. We have a readout of your megabits per second, how many drones you can have active. You can even actually open up your drone bay and have a look at what you've currently got in there. You can see for me personally I'm carrying eight Imperial Navy Acolytes. Now this, this is the stat we're looking at here, drone control range. In this case you can see my drone control range is 54 kilometers. That means as long as my ship is within 54 kilometers of the drones, they can operate. That means I can issue commands to an enemy ship that is within 54 kilometers, right? makes sense. Now admittedly the Tristan does have a lower targeting range than that, so ultimately if I can lock onto something, I can launch my drones at it. But with all of that said then, let's jump into the demonstration section to show you how to actually do that. When you are undocked and in space with a ship that has a drone bay containing drones, you will get this little drone bay window pop up. And I do strongly recommend that if you're going to be using any ship ever that can use drones, you find a nice place to snuggle this away on the side of your user interface because you're going to need this information at a quick glance in any combat situation. Now here you can see I've got all of my Imperial Navy Acolytes already in the drone bay. They're all also individually stacked. You might see something like Imperial Navy Acolyte times 8 if you were to copy this because they are all still stacked, but as soon as you start launching and moving them around, they will naturally unstack themselves and form a list like this, and that is something you absolutely need to be aware of so that you don't have to be quickly scroll mousing up and down, up and down here in order to get information. Now, next to the actual drone itself are these three bars. These correspond to your drone's shields, armor, and structure, just like your heads-up display at the bottom of the screen does. Note that it goes from right to left, so shield is the one on the far right, with armor in the middle, and structure on the left-hand side. And these will go up and down as the drones take damage, or rather, the shield will go up and down because shields recharge over time, whereas the armor and the structure will simply go down. Now, a lot of things in EVE Online can be done either by clicking on different options or by using keybinds on your keyboard. Now, drone control is absolutely one of the ones that I strongly recommend getting into the habit of using the keybinds, because otherwise you have to do things like clicking and control clicking and then hitting launch all drones or clicking them one by one, which is just an absolute waste of time and just a horrific thing to do. Now, to launch all of your drones into space, you simply hold down the shift key and press F. This will now take as many drones as can possibly be supported by your bandwidth and launch them into space. You'll see they've gone from drones in bay here to drones in space, and there's now five of these out and about. And if I were to zoom out a little bit and have a look around, possibly change to a combat overlay, oh no, there they are. You can see my drones whizzing around me. Now you can actually even click onto these if you get your timing just right and take a look at them if you wanna see what they actually look like out in space. And there we are, so we go look at and then zoom in, you can see there what an Imperial Navy Acolyte actually looks like in space, but it's quite headache inducing because they keep wanting to move away from the camera. They zip all over the place. So yeah, let's not do that. Let's go back to looking at my ship. So with the drones in space, you can now simply lock onto a target, any target you like, press F and those drones will now attack that target. Because the Tristan has a longer drone control range than it does a locking range, if I can lock onto a target, I can issue commands to it. It's as simple as that. Now finally, if you want to bring your drones back to your ship, you hold shift and you press R, and this will bring all of your drones back to the ship. You'll get a brief moment where it says returning, and then they will return to your vessel. Now it's worth noting that if I press shift and F to launch them into space again, if one of them, say this top drone here, starts taking damage, I could just go, right, return to drone bay, and then that one will come back, and then I can pick one that hasn't been damaged and launch that drone. That's all very well and good. And now, whilst things are being attacked, while my drone's actually doing their thing, I can look at that drone that's taken damage. You'll just have to imagine this one has. I can now right click it, and I can move drone into a new group. 
Now, I've already created one here called Injured, but I strongly recommend you do the same. Go to New Group and then Injured. This will now move that drone into Injured. Now, the last part of this is to go to all of your other drones. Let's recall everything. Go to all of the other drones as they are currently standing, right click and move these into another group. You can call this whatever you like. I used to call this ACO for Acolytes. I now use one just called Active Combat. We then right click on Active Combat and somewhere in here is Mark Group as Favourite for Launching. So we mark that as Favourite for Launching and it means if we've ever got drones that are injured, when there are still enough drones in the Active Combat Group, it will only launch the ones in the Active Combat Group. It'll launch those first at least. Now this means that essentially when a drone gets injured, I can immediately return it to Drone Bay or I can even just go onto it, right click here and move it to a group, but I'm going to return it to Drone Bay, launch one out of the active group and then move that new drone into my injured group. And I'm going to keep doing this until I run out of actual drones that are still alive. And now I'm going to have to start bringing the injured ones back out. And that's different ways that you can manage your drones in a combat situation like that. It allows you to essentially stop drones taking too much damage. If an enemy starts shooting your drones and you can pull that drone back, not only will that drone survive, but that enemy now has to lock onto a new target, which means they're going to take a lot longer to start dealing damage to other things as well. This drone management can be very powerful and ultimately it's one of the reasons why I love the Tristan because having those eight drones and five active means you can take any of those five back and start putting new ones out there. Same with the healer. The fact that it can only really launch two medium drones but it can carry ten of them, it means you've got eight spares to cycle through. So as soon as one starts taking damage, you can pull it back and pull another one out. And as long as it's only taking damage on the shields, while it's in your drone bay, it's going to be repairing its shields, so eventually you'll be able to launch that one again. Obviously, if it takes damage onto its armor or onto its hull, that can only be repaired when you are docked at a station, and that will cost ISK. Not too much, admittedly, but it's worth bearing in mind that ideally you want to bring your drones back before the shields take all the damage and it starts dealing damage to armor or even to structure. Bring them back whilst they still have shields active, if you can. Remembering that shift our return command is absolutely vital for drone pilots because if you happen to warp away, so for example I've finished a combat site and I decide that I want to go back to base, if I just warp away with all of my drones still out there I will get this warning. Now of course I can stop and recall drones but if I don't click it in time then oh no. My drones have been left behind and you can see here I've now only got three left. Now the Tristan can launch five so I've actually lost a solid like 40% of my DPS there, right? Each drone is 20% of my DPS on this ship so 40% of my DPS is now completely gone. What on earth can I do? Well this is why when you're using a drone ship I do strongly recommend bookmarking the sites that you are in. Ultimately, if you are in an Abyssal dead space and you've jumped the gate, yeah, tough luck, you've lost those drones for good. But even if you've forgotten to bookmark, you can use a combat scanner to find those drones and get them back. All is not lost. Now in this case, I'm going to warp back to the site that I bookmarked here so that we can show drone recovery. Of course, you can just buy more drones, but why would you when they're right here and you can just reclaim them? If we warp back to where they were, I've got my overview set to my everything filter here so I should see them when we arrive. But as we arrive back on the grid of this particular site, you'll see that the drones are all there and there's numerous ways you can now do this. Essentially, I could right click one of these drones and scoop to drone bay and I'll drift towards it and pick it up. And you can actually do this with other people's drones as well if they've been abandoned or you could scoop to cargo hold if your drone bay is full and you still want to be able to pick them up. My personal favourite way is to actually just right click on the capacitor section here and we're going to go reconnect to lost drones. Now if I click this, attempting to reconnect with nearby drones and suddenly those drones are all connected and working their way back to me. If you want to, you can start to go towards these, but if they're really far away, but for the time being, you can see they're now around me. I can now press Shift and R to recall those drones back to me, and they will go straight back into my drone bay there. 
Lost Drones Now Recovered. Again, if you haven't got the bookmark, remember you can do that with a combat scanner. I will cover combat scanning in another video, I'm not going to spend a load of time on that one here, but it is a way to get your drones back if you do accidentally abandon them somewhere that you don't know where. The only exception to that is Abyssal Dead Spaces, because it is impossible to go back to a previous room. If you forget to scoop your drones before moving into the next room, those drones are gone forever. It's at this point in a video I would normally go through a combat demonstration, and I certainly started this video with the promise that I can teach you how to fly a Tristan that will earn you 50 million isk per hour whilst only costing you 17.5 million. And in fact, the skills that you need to fly that ship can be gotten on day one if you're using my referral link, or anyone else's referral link for that matter, to get yourself the 1 million free skill points. Now, if you're going, hang on, Benzie, what's this referral link thing? It's in the description of this video. Click on that link, you can go through to a website, it will ask you to sign in since you already have an account, it will then give you 1 million free skill points. It gives me a nice little bonus as well on the side, but for here I'm more concerned about getting you the 1 million free skill points, right? Because then you can use those to train into the Tristan and start earning 50 million isk per hour. Genuinely, it's that easy. Now I'm going to put that link at the end of this video, so just basically it should auto uh, auto add it to the queue otherwise just click the link at the end of the video and you'll head straight through to that one um, and start learning how to run Abyssal Dead Spaces with the Tristan I've been showing using your newfound drone skills. Anyway folks, I hope that's been useful. I hope this has taught you how drones operate. If you do have any questions, ask in the comment section down below. I will endeavor to answer every comment that I ever get, and I know a load of my community like to respond as well. But if you do want a slightly faster response, come join the Catskull Discord, also linked in the description. Great way to get to know us, speak about EVE Online, have a great time, learn everything that we can teach, and heck, if you're looking for a corporation, Catskull's always recruiting. Anyway, folks, hope this has been helpful. Thank you for watching right the way through to the end. Happy sailing, and see you in New Eden.